Hello scrappers. Time for another tear down, scrap out, depopulate, and sort out the parts video. And we'll see what we get out of today's victim. And today we have a brocade, fast iron edge, 1-2 CGF unit up here on the autopsy table. I don't know anything about this unit. I don't even know really what it is, other than what it says on the front of it. It looks like it's some sort of switch. Um, looks like it has wired and optical ports on it. But really, other than that, I don't know anything about it. Um, it's old, apparently. I've looked for a date code on it, but haven't found anything. But from the amount of dust and the number of sticker remains festooned on it, I guess it's been around the block a few times. Um, don't know whether it works or not. Looked it up online. They aren't going for anything. So, not worth the trouble of trying to sell. Might as well tear it apart. See what's inside. So let's have a look around first before we take the tools to it. So on the front here, and I'm working with a new microphone and camera combination here. I hope uh, that the sound and the video are okay. Um, leave a comment. So we got uh, got some wired connections up front, and we got these uh, optical connections down here with these. I guess these are called SFP modules. Some of them. Whoops! Drop that one on the ground. Uh, some of them have still have SFP modules stuck in them. So I got three of those. And uh, I, I've, I've torn apart SFP modules before. There's not a lot of gold in them, but there's always some. There's these little gold fingers on the front, and then the further in the back, or in the front, as it is, whichever it is, there's uh, some, some gold-plated leads for the uh, optical system. So there's some gold in these, but you got to have a lot of them to get any gold, and getting it apart is kind of a pain in the butt. These would be good items if you had a whole bunch of them, to run them through some sort of crushing machine and separate out the gold parts. So, I don't have a lot of them, so I'll probably end up tearing them apart by hand. Let's see, what else do we got here? Not much. Um, console port. That's about it. Let's turn it around and look at the back of it. And there's not much to see here either. Um, looks like it could have dual power supplies. That's an option, but uh, this unit only has a single power supply. So, okay, look at the bottom of it, because I saw a sticker there. All right, so that's the sticker I saw on the bottom of it. Like I said, I was hoping to find a date code on it, because it looks old, but I don't know if it really is. Maybe it's just had a rough life. But, uh, yeah, to look at that a little closer, but I really don't see a date code on it. So... Anyway, well, you know what? Made in the USA. That tells you right there it's probably old. So we don't make much in the USA anymore. It all comes from China. All right. Let me see what I'm going to need to get it open. It looks like a lot of little Phillips screws holding the case on. So let me put the uh, camera up on the tripod, and uh, we'll start the disassembly process. Uh, see what's inside. Maybe there'll be some good stuff. Okay, so here we go. So, one issue I don't know about with this camera is it's really hard to tell from the little LCD screen on the back whether I'm in good focus or not. So I guess I'll find out in post-production. Which is kind of a kind of a problem because by then I've already destroyed the equipment and I can't refilm the video if it's uh, not, not good and sharp. So we'll see. I may stop from time to time and check to make sure we're good and sharp. Okay, there's a lot of little Phillips screws here. I'm not sure if all of them have to come out, but I suppose we start by taking them all out. And see where that gets me. And I'm hoping this new microphone that I've got on the camera 
will give better sound when I'm not right next to the camera. Because before I would have to yell if I was more than a couple of feet away to be clearly heard on the in the video. So hopefully I can uh, do this at more of a conversational level, not having to be yelling at you folks. All right. Okay. Ah, slide forward, up, and off. Steel, of course, it's always steel. I should have known this thing was so heavy. I mean, it, it, for its size, it is very heavy. So it's all made out of steel. So, all right, into the recycling that's gonna go. Oh, wow, okay. I see some really good stuff right off. Look at all the gold corner BGA chips in there. One, it's a big one too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen gold corner BGA chips. Here's another big BGA, not a gold corner, but I'm sure they'll have good gold in it. And we got three metal top BGAs. Holy cow. I love these gold corner BGAs because they are a little over 1% gold by weight, my experience with them. Oh, it's getting windy. I hope that's not drowning out the audio. And it looks like we got a ram stick up here too. So that's nice. So get the top off. I already see all kinds of good stuff. Eh, can't tell by feel. It'd be really, really nice if it's a double-sided board, but I'm probably not that lucky. Let me pull this power supply out and get a look at it. Figure out how to get it out. Looks like these slide and then you pull. There we go. Well, I guess I'll have to take this apart too. Power supplies usually don't have that much good stuff in them, but uh, yeah, we'll see on this. Set that aside for now. Then we got this blank plate here where the second power supply goes on. Ah, I was hoping that the power supply pins would have been gold plated, big chunky gold plated pins, but they're not. Looks like they're just tin plated. All right, so let me see if I can get this uh, really nice looking board out of here. Like more Phillips screws to take out. Lots of screws. Holy cow. I see where that Cisco engineer who uses way too many screws on his equipment used to work before he went to Cisco. He must have worked for Brocade. Where exactly were they expecting this board to go? any screws I'm probably going to miss one or two. We'll see. They do tend to blend in. Okay, that's all I am seeing. Disconnect a few cables for the fans and uh, this cable for the console connector. Oh! Ah! I guess I got all the screws. That's amazing. But can I get the board out? Ah! There we go. Alright. Ooh! Yeah! It is kind of double-sided. There's a lot of little chips on the back. They look like RAM chips, too. And RAM chips are also good for gold recovery. A lot of gold in them. There's a lot of little tantalum capacitors here. There's a lot, a lot, of, ooh, thousands, it looks like, of little tiny MLCCs, too. 
Oh, they're so small. They're like grain of salt size. But there's a lot of them. Yeah. So this is good. Okay. Let me set this aside for a second. All right, is there anything else on this chassis I want? Well, I will probably take the console connector off because it's got gold pins in it. And I'll bet this thing has gold pins in it too. I'll just bet you. The rest of this is just steel and a couple of fans, which I really have no use for. So that can go in all in the, go into steel recycling. All right, so let me get this console connector off. Hope I'm hope I'm in frame. Okay, there we go. There's that. Set that aside. Set this aside. Wow, that is that is one heavy chassis. All right, let's take a quick look inside this power supply. See what we got going on in here. Best way to get in here. Well, we'll start by taking the screws out of the top, but I'm not sure that's going to open it. screws on this side. Let me take them out too. Okay. Still seems to be pretty thoroughly put together here. Well, let me take the screws out of the front and the back. If I take out every screw I see, eventually, hopefully the thing will fall apart. We'll see. Ah, thing seems to be coming loose. Maybe. Maybe it's just that plate. All right, take the screws out of the front. See if that gets me anywhere. See what I mean about excessive screws? Taking out a dozen screws already, and this thing's still put together. There's a screw under there. I'll bet there is. Hiding under this sticker. Get it off. Yep. Ah! Yeah, just as I thought. Not much there, really. So, that's a pretty low grade board in there. And some more steel. That's all we got there. All right. Set that aside again. Take a look at this board again. So, uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I depopulate boards in a kiln. Put the, uh, put the board in the kiln. Raise the temperature of the kiln up to the melting point of solder. Since this is almost all surface mount, all this stuff's just going to fall right off into the bottom of the kiln. I've got a catch basin down there. To collect the pieces so uh, but some things don't behave well in the kiln um, this uh, this connector over here it's got a nice gold pins in it that'll melt in the kiln and tomb the gold pins so what I'll probably try to do is pull that out before it goes in the kiln if I can we'll see well I pulled the plastic part off, the pins stayed behind. I'll have to just cut them off with my diagonal cutters so that I don't have to find them and all the debris in the bottom of the kiln. Um, these RJ45 connectors, dual connectors, those will fall right off eventually. Now these optical connectors, let me pull one of these apart. Yeah, 
That's what I thought. But they're surface mounted. Okay. So they're plastic, but they're surface mounted. So I think they will probably fall off in the kiln before the plastic melts. And I'll just take these uh, metal enclosures off just so that there's nothing to impede them falling off once they get up to temperature. These are just steel. They're worthless. RFI shielding. Okay. Oh, and there's, let me get the ram stick out too. See what we got here. Uh, it doesn't say what the uh, density is, but I'll bet it's pretty low. PC133 compliant. It doesn't really tell me how many megabytes or gigabytes. I'm sure it's in the megabyte range, probably this old. But, you know, it's got some uh, nice gold fingers on it. It's got some RAM chips on it. RAM chips have a lot of gold in them. It's a keeper. All right. So, let's see. Is there anything else I need to take off this board before it goes in the kiln? Are those gold pins in there? Let's see here. Can't tell in this lighting. Those are gold pins. Well, the fan connectors have gold pins in them. All right, so I'll take my diagonal cutters and I'll cut these off. And I'll cut these pins off from the uh, the console port. And uh, let's see, everything else that has gold on its surface mount should fall right off. The ram stick socket. Yep, everything else should fall off that I really want. Got some big, chunky uh, tantalum capacitors over here. Look at all the oscillators. One, two, three, four, five. Five oscillators. They're not gold band oscillators, but still, you know, nice addition. I'm slowly filling up a mason jar with these oscillators. I keep the gold band ones for myself and process them because they have a fair amount of gold in them. But, uh, individual quartz crystals and these, uh, steel cased oscillators. I just collect them. Sooner or later I'll have the whole mason jar full. I'll put it on eBay and, and sell it to somebody who wants to process them. Alright, I guess it's time. I will cut these uh, I will cut these pins off with my diagonal cutters and then uh, we'll head to the kiln and uh, get this board processed. Alrighty, got the board in the kiln. Uh, I'm going to close the lid and start the cycle. It'll take about an hour to get up to temperature. I ramp it up pretty slowly just so that uh, I don't dump too much heat into it too quickly and, and melt or, or char things. So it's pretty slow ramp up to about the melting point of solder. Then I can just reach in with a gloved hand and a pair of pliers and uh, shake the board and knock anything off that's, that's sticking. And usually everything falls right off the board. Um, what I'll probably have to do is once it gets up to temp, I'll, I'll do that once. Shake it and knock stuff off and then flip the board over because uh, the heat rises. So the, the, the top half of the board will get hot first and things will come off. I'll flip the board over, put it back in for a few more minutes. The bottom half of the board then will now be at the top. Everything will melt, fall right off. Should have a totally depopulated board. Well, mostly. There might be a few through-hole components that stick, but most of the through-hole stuff is uh, stuff I don't want anyway. So, uh, we'll see how clean the board gets. So, let me close the lid. And we'll start the cycle. And I'll show you what we get when it's done. Okay, while I was waiting for the kiln to get up to temperature, I decided since I was bored to just take apart one of these SFP modules and show you what's inside. So we got these gold fingers here on the end. It's double-sided gold fingers, which is nice. Uh, but there's nothing else in here that's all that interesting. I mean, there's a few little tiny BGA chips. But really, there's nothing else. Now, I've taken other ones apart where there were long gold-plated leads on the... Uh, emitter and uh, receiver modules over here, but these particular ones don't have that. So really most of the value here is just in the fingers. 
So if you got a bunch of these that are all the same, maybe take one of them apart, because getting into this was a real pain. It was really difficult. It, it took me longer to get into this than it did to disassemble the rest of the unit. All right? So, um, so, but if you got a bunch of these and you want to know just what's valuable inside, maybe disassemble one of them just to see if it's worth the trouble of taking them all apart. In this case, I would say it's not worth the trouble. What I probably do on these other ones is just uh, break off the, the gold fingers on the end and be done with it. Throw the rest of it in the garbage. But uh, it's definitely worth a look because, like I said, I've taken some apart that had a lot more gold in them and uh, kind of made it worthwhile. All right. I'll be back when the kiln's done and we've got some uh, parts to look at. Okay, all the stuff's out of the kiln. All the parts are off the board. Came out pretty good. Um, I kind of rushed it along. This stuff's still warm. we got some bad weather coming. So I wanted to get this done today before the weather comes in. So, nice clean circuit board here. Pretty much every single thing came off of it. Nice and clean. Put it on my... Uh, depopulated board pile. Um, this is just the garbage. This is uh, electrolytic capacitors, connectors, there's a lot of chip resistors there, um, torrids, you know, um, magnetics, just stuff that's not worth anything. Here's the real prize up here. All these gold, gold corner BGAs. Those are nice. And uh, I'll tell you what, these metal top BGAs aren't too bad either. And I found out after I depopulated them that this black one, that's another metal top BGA. So I'll have to separate the uh, separate the, uh, the fiber back with the uh, epoxy blob from these metal tops. And that's where the gold is. Let's see what else we got. We got uh, all these uh, crystal oscillators here. Uh, a whole bunch of LEDs. And every LED has a little bit of uh, gold in it, a little gold whisker, bond wire. Got all these uh, duplex RJ45 connectors over here. Each one has uh, eight little gold pins in it, so that's nice. Uh, got some other gold-plated connectors over here. This held the, uh, the RAM stick, and all of these were for the SFP modules. So, got a bunch of them. They've all got some gold plating on them. Got a whole pile of miscellaneous other ICs. A lot of them look like RAM chips. Yeah, and a lot of them have numbers that look like RAM chips, too. So, there's some good gold in these chips right here. So, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, got uh, a whole big pile of tantalum capacitors. My goodness, there were a lot of tantalum capacitors on this board. Some big yellow ones and a lot of little tiny black ones. Just just tons of tantalums. Got a few of the um, MLCCs that came off the board here. They're all magnetic. These are just the bigger ones. There were probably thousands of uh, tiny little grain of salt sized ones on the board too. Every single one of them was magnetic too. So as I understand it, it's the non-magnetic ones that have the the large amounts of precious metals in them, um, palladium or whatever. Of course, these are magnetic. They might have some silver in them. I don't know. I'll, I'll put them with my collection and someday. Maybe I'll try processing them. But not going to get my hopes up. So that's pretty much everything. You know, I got uh, some steel from the case too. Um, but that's going in the recycling. There was a little plastic that's going in the recycling. Um, Almost forgot, got this stuff over here, too. Um, you know, here's the RAM stick, uh, the uh, the fingers from uh, two of the SFP modules, and here's the third module. I haven't broken the fingers off. And then here's a few, just a few gold pins that uh, I collected off of the board before I put it in the kiln. So, not a huge haul. But considering it all came off of one board, it's not too bad. Um, I may be able to get more of those brocade units in the future. So if you see them laying around and, and can get them for free or for really cheap, they might be worth uh, tearing down and uh, collecting the gold and precious metals out of them. I wouldn't pay much for them, though. Uh-uh. 
they're not worth it but if you can get them free or super duper cheap they're worth it just takes a little work so um, I'll process these with the rest of my uh, gold corner BGAs I'll process these with the rest of my IC chips um, I'll run this stuff this stuff through the uh, um, gold stripper the eco gold X gold stripper which I have a video about I'll put a link to that up in the corner up here um, and uh, so I'll get some gold out of most of this stuff everything except the garbage in the board you know and, and uh, I'll put the uh, tantalum capacitors with my big collection of tantalum capacitors my big mason jar full and uh, it's getting full and when it is full I'll sell them on eBay to somebody who wants them it's a tan old tantalum capacitor sell so that's nice uh, same with uh, the oscillators I'll add them to my oscillator and crystal jar which is getting quite full too all right I hope you found this interesting, informative, educational, any or all of the above. If so, please give the video a like. And please subscribe to see more videos as they come out. As I uh, you know, tear down more equipment to get its uh, gold-filled guts out. And then future videos, I will convert those gold-filled guts into gold. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Keep it safe out there. Bye.